Welcome to your week ahead astrology forecast. I'm trying something new this week and I hope it actually works out better for the channel. Um, this is going to be, this is going to cover, this one video is going to cover uh, Scorpio, Libra, and Sagittarius all in one video, but I will definitely put the timestamps down below so that you can get right to your sign. But what I noticed about the videos was that basically the big stuff is all the same for everyone. So I'm gonna start out with the big stuff for everyone, and then I'm gonna focus things down into the specifics. And when I do that, I'll go right into the decans of that zodiac sign, and then I'll pick up with the next one. So I hope this works out a little bit better. What this does is it enables me to condense three videos into one video while giving you the same amount of information. But when it comes to YouTube, it works out a little bit better for the channel because then I YouTube isn't, isn't being triggered like I'm uploading too much content throughout the week because I upload 12 videos a week over here. This way I'll only upload four videos for the week. And in doing so, I'll be able to free up space so that I can go live more and do more things here, upload more videos about specific astrological events that I might wanna talk to you guys about. It will help me not bombard this system and hopefully work out a lot better for the channel. So this is what I'm gonna be trying to do. So Scorpio, Libra, Sagittarius, let's get into the big stuff. This is for the week of September 26th through October 2nd, 2023. And there is one particular event that we should talk about. This is the full moon on September 29th. It is a full moon in Aries. And ultimately, Aries moons are always high energy, volatile, um, and good at releasing emotions like anger and frustration. Of course, if you're impacted by this, and I will let you know if your zodiac sign is, some of you are, there, there's going to be more of a tendency toward angry outbursts, but it's more for expelling, like getting it out of your system allowing it to release in order to cleanse because baseline that's what a full moon is about it's the cycle of the moon is about the ebb and flow of life you know the growing and the growing and then the release and full moons are when everything is so full it needs to be released it needs the toxicity has to be dumped or we need to make room for the new cycle so that's what happens and that's of course what's going to happen on this full moon um it's at five to six degrees aries that's when the sun and the moon will be in perfect opposition to each other um there is this okay if for, as far as full moons go especially the ones that we've been experiencing um this is pretty status quo like this is pretty pretty standard it allows me to look at a moon in aries and say this is this is what it is and this is what's going to happen and it's not aspected to a lot of other things making it a little bit more connected and integrated into the bigger picture this is the the biggest picture really is just the ebb and flow of the moon cycle which is the most closely connected to human life cycles so this is pretty standard and very natural every all of it's natural but you know what i'm saying it's it's uh as expected there is a particular a synchronicity though that i do want to discuss with you guys in that while the moon is full um, the moon is semi-square to Uranus. Okay. And that means the sun across the way, doesn't, it doesn't mean it has to be, but the sun across the way in Libra is also semi-square to something, and that is Venus. And Venus and Uranus are square to each other this week. So this full moon has a particular interest around that Venus Uranus square the sun being square to Venus or semi square to Venus and the moon being semi square to Uranus moon being semi square to Uranus is a need for emotional stimulation is really is really what it boils down to and sun being semi square to Venus I had to write this down um, 
is almost like a, a, a need or an inkling or an itch to stimulate your life force in general and to feel life. So those things and the fact that Venus is square to Uranus is stimulation in itself to change and to value things differently and to be open to different things coming needing needing a difference needing a switch needing a change so this week to feel the stimulation of i want something different i need to spice up my life with this full moon in aries and aries is already a volatile energy i would say for this week don't hate yourself or judge yourself if you need to fall off your normal routine in ways that you can't even explain because that's what's going to happen and that's what needs to happen. There's a purge that needs to happen about the regularity and the normality and whatever, you know, route, rote kind of schedule we have put ourselves into because it's not working. You know, if, if something was working, then we'd at least on the other side of it, you know, of our sacrifice may be the regularity, the normality, the tenacity, but then on the other side of it, there would be, okay, productivity. What I think this full moon is gonna make, uh, allow us to release is the need to do something simply because it's our safety net and the ability to finally see what we've been doing just because it's our safety net, even though it's not effective. Aries likes to be productive. And, and sometimes Aries can try to be forward without even thinking about productivity. I don't think that's the case here. I think that there is this recalibration or balance. Remember the sun is in Libra. And so we are stimulated to look for balance in all things. Balance is not boredom or, 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 or status quo. Balance is harmony. So where we have become unharmonized, this moon is stimulating us to take action. And that disharmony, remember Venus does rule Libra. So this is all interconnected very suggestively, very softly. This isn't a heavy hit. And so you'll feel the stimulation is almost like nagging inside of you. I don't want to do it that way this time. I just don't want to, I can't be, I can't be doing this. And the reason is because there's a cue here that, well, it's not working anyway. You've been some, some routines we do because we know it's effective, because we see the productivity of them. And that's the point of routine. And really, when you look at Virgo energy, um, that's really the point. It's not to be boring, it's to be effective, it's to be efficient. If there's no effectiveness and efficiency coming out of a routine, there's no reason to keep it. And so the recalibration here is stimulation in a direction that is different in order to get different answers or try different things to see if there will be different outcomes because we are humanly acknowledging that certain things that we've chosen, routines we've gotten into are not working and need to be thrown away, purged, or definitely fixed because something isn't, isn't, isn't functional. This recalibration is really what this, this moon is allowing us to to push off and to or or push out into the world to release and allow you know well because it's aries we're going to feel like we're going to feel it in that the trigger is going to be take action do something about it right and aries is not the thoughtful energy aries is the active energy so it's like try something different don't just don't just don't just sit there and do the same thing when it's irritating you try something different and so the try something different is what we're going to be stimulated to do and the purge of what isn't working is what is going to become abundantly clear now we have other things going on in the sky as well that we need to talk about because it's important Nep mercury is in opposition to neptune all week long now or i'm sorry by the 29th uh so but there's something else going on with mercury as this happens 
there's a grand trine that Mercury becomes a part of. If you remember, the sun was a part of this when the sun was in Virgo not too long ago. So this week, it's Mercury's turn to fill that position. Mercury is going to be trying to Pluto, trying to Uranus. This is really interesting energy because Mercury is really our conscious understanding, our conscious knowledge, the stuff that's palpable that we can interact with intellectually, spatially, all of those things. It is our understanding and our knowing knowledge you know it's not super intelligence like uranus it's the day-to-day -day, the practicalities the stuff that we can handle and see the fact that that is now in alignment in a trine in an easement with pluto and uranus is also suggestive of this this change in patterns and routines and to finally be able to see see clearly the um the need for it Right, this sense of because Mercury in Virgo, which it still is, is very practical and very scheduled and very pedantic, you know. So if if it's being put into a position of dynamic change, and of course, Pluto is meta metamorphic change, and Uranus is genius kind of rebellious change, then now Mercury in a grand trine to them is going to be stimulated to be able to see oh maybe what i'm doing isn't working so it means that we'll probably we'll, we'll we'll get this understanding of the practical applications of why things aren't working now mercury is also in opposition to neptune mercury in op opposition to neptune is very distracting energy it's very off energy it's very it's energy of uh making decisions with your imagination instead of your brain. But I think that this is what's going to be hyper exposed because remember Neptune, while is, is a secondary part of this grand trine and then Neptune is sextile to Pluto and Neptile is sextile to Uranus. So it's almost like this big kind of conspiracy of the outer planets of look where I've led you to show you how far I was capable of deceiving you and why it's so important that you need to interact and be more wary. So there is this almost like aha, a soft awakening of sorts through the understanding or the realization that we've just been imagining the productivity here. We've just been imagining that these things will work out. We've been basing a lot of the systems we've set in place on falsehoods and delusions. And the aha and understanding of that is also teaching us how to understand ourselves more deeply and stimulate inside of us what desires were we looking for, what were we actually after, and why didn't we actually achieve it. Instead, we achieved, achieved the delusion of it because maybe it seemed more enticing and easier. So even though this is a, a soft, this is a soft energy. It is almost like a yawn in that it is awakening us in many ways that I think globally we need to be aware. So what else is happening this week? Venus. Venus is, is definitely stimulated a great deal and stimulating a lot of other things. She is in a um, semi-square to the sun all week long, which is about, I want to spice up my life. <laughs> I want to add some new stuff to it. I want to experience more pleasure, but at the same time, I also, no, I really do. I, cause I'm not, I'm not feeling the same things I felt for the same old, same old. Remember, she is also in a square to Uranus. So this is, this is that stimulation of change, of liking different things, trying different things, wanting things that are outside of the box. We were here with her a couple of months ago when she was in retrograde, and now we're here with her as the direct energy. So this is going to be far more able to understand, and you can see it happening outwardly. This could definitely stimulate changes, especially in romantic relationships or financial situations. The stimulation of change in our value systems, what we value, what we desire. Um, Venus is also sextile to Mars, which is a highly sexual energy, a highly potent energy, virile energy. So she wants to take action. She wants to make moves. She's emboldened by this energy. 
and stimulated in ways that maybe she never was before. She is also sextile to the south node and trying to the north node. So taking opportunities through where she was and what she's familiar with that are then leading her to new openness for the future, for what could be valuable. So we definitely are having a systems shift here in terms of what's actually attractive to us, what us as a people, uh, what stimulates us, what turns us on, and what hasn't worked and what we need to get away from. Um, okay, so that's the big stuff, right? That's for everybody. Now I'm gonna start breaking things down into the specific zodiac signs, and then I will further break down those zodiac signs into their three decans. And then, yeah, I will put the timestamps down below so it's easy for you guys to get to them. All right, Scorpio. Scorpio specific information, and this is for September 26th through October 2nd of 2023. Let's look at your ruling dignitaries and what's going on in Scorpio. Actually, I'm gonna start with what's going on in Scorpio itself because that's really easy. There's nothing going on in Scorpio itself. There's nothing, there's not a lot of energy there. Um, but there is a lot of stimulation with Mars and Pluto, so let's talk about it. Mars is conjunct the south node this week. So there is this easement in knowing what we're good at and feeling really good at what we're good at. But there's also this opposition to Chiron and the north node, which could make us feel a little less inclined to try new things. Or actually, no, I take that back more stimulated to know we have to do something differently but not necessarily sure or uncomfortable because we're not necessarily sure what that has to be um, the opposition to chiron of course can make us feel in some ways sterile in some ways uh, unable to do things correctly and that's why where it's extra hard right now to to try things a different way but the consciousness of knowing it has to happen is there. So that can be very frustrating energy. Um, by the 10th, Mars is also going to be squared to Pluto, which is a very extreme energy of just potent change, disruptive energy, can be very um, 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 dangerous. I guess energy so watch out for those inclinations to take things to the extreme especially when you're running from what you know you have to look at which is the inevitable changes which will bring you outside of your comfort zone that'll take work that'll take real truth that'll take a lot of things that a lot of people like to run from and with all that Mars energy inclined more toward the south node this could be a way that we start to deceive and trick ourselves deeper into a comfort zone that we're really supposed to be stimulated out of. Just an FYI, um, Mars is sextile to Venus all week long, which is very sexual, sensual energy. And because it is so easy, it could be what you easily fall to, to escape the difficult shit. And then we have that uh, um, quincunx to Neptune, quincunx to Uranus with Mars, which is all about stimulation of... Um, um, like knowing that there has to be changes, knowing that there has to be changes, but not wanting to know it, not wanting to see it and getting easily distracted and rebelling, maybe in ways that throw us off our path instead of putting us deeper on it. Let's talk about Pluto. Well, Pluto is in its long-term trine to Uranus and sextile to Neptune and square to the nodes. We know that, which means that it is helping to shift humankind's consciousness. That's what it's doing. Um, but how does it impact you directly? Well, there are two things that are happening this week that'll, that'll be more direct and more day-to-day, Pluto's day-to-day -day effect on you. So that would be by the 29th, Pluto is going to be trying to Mercury. This is very powerful and will enable very powerful and persuasive under uh, uh, persuasive energy. 
You'll be able to easily understand what people want to hear and you'll be able to powerfully state it. So it is a very manipulative energy. It's just whether or not it's going to be used for better or worse. Just an FYI, um, saying what they need to hear to get what you want. This is a, this is a potent energy this week. Uh, and then also square to Mars by the 1st of October. So that square to Mars right, right after that full moon, there's going to be that explosion of what do I need to get rid of? What do I need to do differently? And then we come into this grant, Pluto comes into this grand trine with Mercury. And then the next day it'll come into a square with Mars. This is, this could be very, very, in other words, you could be very, very tempted this week to get your way by manipulating people, even though eventually it will be counterintuitive to what you really want. So I think in this energy this week, Scorpio, it's important for you to dig down into what is what is my real outcome? What do I really want? Do I really want happiness? Okay, am I happy having to manipulate people to behave the way I want them to behave so that I feel happy? Or am I actually happy? And this is very powerful work. It's very powerful shadow work for you to understand how you can manipulate yourself by manipulating others. And in doing so, dig your grave deeper instead of resurrecting and rising. So it's really important now to take hold of your mind and say, what is it that I actually want? Do I want a wholesome, loving, beautiful connection to another person? Okay, because I can manipulate the shit out of anybody this week to get them to do what I want them to do. But now I have a zombie, not a human. Do I want to be married to a zombie or do I want to be married or connected to somebody who I know is actually interacting with me honestly, effectively, efficiently? Do I want to be with an equal or a consummate subordinate? It's just, you know, because let me tell you, 20 years down the line, you could wake up and realize I am absolutely not satisfied and it's all their fault. It's not. It's your fault because in some ways, on some levels, you've known it and seen it the whole time and you were actually manipulating yourself by outwardly manipulating them. And this is how deep Pluto energy goes. This is how deep Scorpionic energy goes. I should not have to tell you guys these things. You absolutely know them. You know them better than anyone else. It's just will you or won't you this week. This is that power that you're dealing with this week. So... Here we have the three decans. So let's go into the three decans of Scorpio. Um, decan number one, if you are at the cusp of decan number one, so the Scorpio, uh, Scorpio's, so Scorpio Libra cusp, um, you are square to Pluto. Your natal suns are square to Pluto. You guys have been square to Pluto. So this is especially impactful for you guys who already have that Plutonic influence on your son to take authority to possess the situation to get things done it is essential for you guys to be very aware of okay but what is my end game and it's is it going to make me happy because it gives me pleasure or make me happy because it aligns me with my true joy it's going to be important you have a long-term trying to saturn which also means um effectiveness efficiency getting things done this is this could be huge let me put it this way with your power this week this will be highly impactful and effective when it comes to your profession but when it comes to your personal relationships it will be the beginning of the end if you wield it in the wrong way just an fyi that's the potency of pluto um your natal suns are quincunx to the full moon, so it will create extra agitation, frustration, and explosiveness, and a need to cut out of the norm. Your natal suns are also, most of the week, semi-squared to Mercury, so I would not, being sem, your natal suns being semi-squared to Mercury, um, while Mercury is trying to Pluto, you you would you would be more likely to sort of manipulate yourself into the wrong position instead of the right one 
that semi square to Mercury will, will cause a lot of agitation and irritation when it comes to things not going exactly the way you planned. So maybe that's a blessing for you guys in a way. <clears throat> this frustration of that will help to keep you from like um, doing too much damage, right? Subconsciously. Um, yeah, little things, nagging things. This overall is a very stimulating week and the stimulation is happening through frustration and agitation, especially with those little nitpicky things in life that keep popping up or you keep being drawn to your attention. FYI. Um, let's go on to Scorpio 2s. If you know that your natal sun is between 10 and 19 degrees Scorpio, you are Scorpio 2s. This correlates more toward birthdays between, say, the uh, 1st and 11th of November. Um, Scorpio ones, I'm sorry, Scorpio ones are more the end of October. So say the October 22nd through October 31st would be more Scorpio ones. Um, Scorpio 2s, your natal suns are semi-square to the current sun all week. This could cause agitation with how you feel about yourself, how you think people are thinking about you, extra frustration and a little um, deflation of the self-esteem. Just be aware of that. It's only for this week, um, especially if you're born, uh, say, the 9th, 10th, 11th, really the 9th through 12th. Your natal suns are quincunx to Chiron, so that will also stimulate this sense of I'm not good enough. So with all your natal suns being semi-square to the, the current sun, this could be just an extra week of um, your self-esteem could take a hit without you realizing why. It's just the cosmos trying to help you understand how to be the best of yourself and pointing out those aspects of who you are that are in most doubt and for you to have an honest conversation with yourself it could be quite productive um your all your natal suns are also in opposition to jupiter so the opposition to jupiter will stimulate you to want to get the show on the road and why aren't things growing exponentially and why aren't i moving forward and why aren't I expanding so all in all this is a week where you will be very judgmental against yourself and very hard on yourself so it's extra important for you to be compassionate to who you are and give yourself time to understand the challenges as opposed to hate yourself or get frustrated with yourself because you can't figure them out right away. FYI. All right, now Scorpio 3s. If you know that your natal suns are between 20 and 29 degrees Scorpio, you guys are Scorpio 3s. This correlates to birthdays between the 12th and the 22nd of November. Your natal suns are in opposition to Uranus. Um, now, that's been there for a while, but this week, Venus is on the move. Venus is square to Uranus. Your natal suns are also square to Uranus. This is going to upstart you with relationships, to really stimulate you to that shift, that grind, that sense of, I want, I want something different, I want something new. It could also stimulate you to be very sensual with your partner and try different things with them. That's always the best way to go, but you could also be stimulated to be more independent right now and need your independence more now than you ever have. And ultimately, that could be a challenge to your relationship, especially if somebody isn't willing to give that to you. So it's best to explain, explain, explain if you are in a long-term relationship. Your natal suns are sextile to the sun all week, which will give you confidence and a sense of self-assurance and shine about you where people will notice you more. There is ro more romance here. So the stimulation can really be with just let's switch things up, let's be playful, presenting it in that capacity instead of, hey, I can't stand you. Now, because of the stimulation to Uranus, this opposition to Uranus, you may very much find yourself wanting independence. And for those of you who are single, you will be very, very happy you are this week. I think you will enjoy this week the most because it's least contradictory to what you've committed yourself to. 
there is definitely the sense of, wow, I'm so glad to be independent. I'm so glad to be able to try new things. I'm so glad to be able to be stimulated by different things and experiment and really in, in not indulge, but yeah, in, indulge in the trying of the new and the different and the happiness of the independence. So for you guys, I think that will work out really well this week. All right, guys, I love you so much. And please always remember to uh, like this video and share it with people that you know um, might like it too. And if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, please do subscribe. If you haven't checked out your Scorpio tarot reading on Born Without Boundaries Tarot, please do. I love you guys, and I'll talk to you next week. All right, so let's go on to Libra. All right, Libras. So this is your Libra-specific breakdown for September 26th through October 2nd of 2023. So Venus is very active this week, extremely active. Um, and she's active during this full moon. Libras, it's going to be you guys, her or a specific set of you that is in opposition to this full moon. Let's talk about Libra specific energy. What's happening in Libra? The sun is in Libra. It's going to be moving between three and nine degrees Libra this week. Uh, Mars is also still in Libra. It's going to be moving between 19 and 23 degrees this week. So Mars is conjuncting the south node in the third decan of Libra this week. For those of you born toward the end of Libra season, this will give you a fierce push toward really feeling really good about your, like uh, feeling really um, good about what you know you're already good at. It can be a pitfall, but it can also be a blessing if you allow it to stimulate you toward the future. Because remember, this is all happening in opposition to the North Node, which is which means that what your discomfort zone will be challenging you a lot more and stimulating you a lot more this week. Um, for those of you born at the beginning of Libra season, your natal suns are conjunct the sun and your natal suns will be in direct opposition to the, the full moon. So this will be a very powerful full moon. It will be, could be very angry or potently stimulating and you will feel the need for change and see very clearly where things aren't working and where you need to start making space for for whatever you want to try to start making it work um so very potent full moon for you uh venus let's talk about what venus is doing uh venus is in leo she is moving between 20 and 24 degrees leo which means she's in the third decan of leo um she is sextile to Mars and sextile to the South Node while Mars conjuncts the South Node. So there is this stimulation of, there's this sexuality, sensuality, knowing what you like, knowing what feels good to you, being very certain of what you're good at and where you're attractive, right? Knowing that very well. She's also semi-squared to the sun, which means she's agitated in some ways, irritated. She wants more joy or pleasure out of life. Venus is in opposition to Saturn or comes into opposition to Saturn by the end of this week, which means, especially since she's also square to Uranus, I am sick of the same old, same old. I'm tired of the norm. And this is what brings her to the point of, I'm going to break this shit down because I don't want the same old, same old anymore. Venus is going to be in quincunx to the full moon, which means there is this internal rumble of anger and irritation, outburst, that uh, for anything that is basically like keeping her from her true levels of stimulation, her true joys and her true pleasures. So this will become very potent energy for you. I don't know if you're gonna use it to act out or to just realize that certain things, something's gotta give, right? How much control you have over yourself and your ability to communicate effectively, especially if you're in a partnership, is really gonna be what comes down to this week of whether or not it's effective for you and will help stimulate you forward 
or what will start breaking things apart and chewing them apart. Um, let's go into the decans, shall we? Libra 1. If you know that your natal sun is between 0 and 9 degrees Libra, you guys are Libra 1. This correlates to birthdays between um, basically September Libras. I would say September 22nd and October 1st. Your natal suns are conjunct the sun and in opposition to the full moon on the 29th. Conjunct the sun means knowing who the hell you are and understanding who you are and your, your, own, your own personal abilities, capabilities to be really connected to your purpose. Opposition to the moon just makes it a full moon. But the fact that this moon is, is in Aries, it's volatile energy when the moon is in Aries. This is going to help you release. This is very potent energy for you. It's a potent virile is very, it's just, it's just, if you are more pop offish and more aggressive than you normally are, especially around the 28th, 29th, 30th, that is because of this full moon. This full moon will actually have you acting in ways that are far more forward and far more independent than you normally act. Um, your natal suns are also semi-square to Venus, Venus, which will want, want, want stimulation. It'll ache for stimulation. It'll, it'll definitely kick you out of the norm. Um, and if you're at the cusps, your natal suns have been trying to Pluto and uh, in opposition to Neptune as well as quincunx to Saturn. So this is giving you a very potent energy toward um, seeing things differently and shifting your preferences in life anyway. So this could be your first time out around this time to really push the boundaries of, um, of um, your accepted norm. Let's put it that way. It's very stimulating energy this week. Let's go on to Libra 2s. So if you know that your natal sun is between, um, I'm sorry, 10 and 19 degrees Libra, you guys are Libra 3s. This correlates to Libra birthdays between October 2nd and October 11th, 12th, and in around those dates. Your natal suns are in a long-term opposition to Chiron, which is challenging energy. <clears throat> it's energy that challenges how you feel about yourself and how much self-esteem you have in terms of, you know, am I good at this? Can I be good at this? You'll be extra hard on yourself while that's happening over the next couple of years. Um, this quincunx to Jupiter will frustrate that because it'll be like, but I want to grow and I want to expand and that's good. So that could give a lot of you inspiration. It can give some of you um, distraction and deterrent. <clears throat> that's more long-term energy. Um, that's really not, well... Yeah, that's more long. That's more long-term energy for you that this week. Um, Jupiter is unaspected in large part this week, so there can be some surprises that come up. And based on what's going on in the rest of the cosmos, it can be stuff that you didn't even realize you were interested in may come up, and maybe allow yourself to try. Let's move on to Libra threes. So Libra threes. If you know that your natal sun is between 20 and 29 degrees Libra, you guys are Libra threes. This correlates to birthdays between the 12th and the 22nd of October, right up to that Scorpio cusp. Your natal suns are conjunct to Mars. Your natal suns are conjunct to the South Node. This is going to have you highly effective and efficient at what you know you're good at. It'll make you very prideful at what you know you're good at. You can have outbursts defending what you know you're good at or what you feel good at or what you are certain of. This is self-assurance in your comfort zone. Um, I have marked on here, your natal suns are in a long-term uh, square to Pluto. This quincunx to Neptune, your natal suns are quincunx to Neptune and semi-square to Mercury. That's what I was putting together. So there can be some eye awakening or eye opening understanding of starting to see certain things that you may have misinterpreted or may have seen wrong 
or in some ways a lack of clarity of mind that is frustrating you. Um, this could put you in a volatile situation this week where you're taking action just for action's sake as opposed to really thinking things through. Though thinking things through will not be your first instinct this week. So overall, you are kind of prone by this energy to be more impulsive this week based on what you feel you know and you're certain of. How that will work out, I'm not quite sure. You are, your natal suns are in quincunx to Uranus, which can stimulate this sense of independence and wanting a sense of independence and, and knowing who you are. So this can very well be sort of the beginning of an awakening of a more independent version of who you are. Interesting, right? I told you it's a soft energy, but it is potent. So I hope you guys enjoyed this reading. Please do like it and subscribe to the channel. If you think that somebody would find it um, interesting, please share it with them. And then come on over to Born Without Boundaries Tarot and make sure that you check out your week ahead tarot card reading. I love you guys. Bye. Whew. Okay, Sagittarius. This is for um, September 26th. Uh, through October 2nd, including that full moon in Aries, which I think will be quite stimulating. For some of you, it is going to be trine to your natal suns, so that will be more potent and impactful for you. Um, it'll, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. So let's talk about Sagittarius-specific energy. What's going on in Sagittarius, and then what's going on with Sagittarius' ruling dignitary, which is Jupiter? So easy, what's going on in Sagittarius is really nothing. There's no big major aspects or major planetary planets there. But we go to Jupiter, and Jupiter is very active this week. Jupiter is at 14 degrees Taurus. And through the 29th, it is in a trine to Mercury, which is very stimulating energy, very talkative energy, saying a lot, knowing a lot, feeling like you know a lot and even taking in more information, which is beautiful energy. But something really interesting happens to Jupiter um, toward midweek, and that is Jupiter becomes unaspected. Now, an unaspected planet in a natal chart tells us a lot <clears throat> about a person. An unaspected planet, just in terms of the general charts, can basically tell me that can can tell me that we have some unpredictable energy in the air and the fact that that's Jupiter and Jupiter brings luck and abundance and growth can be very cool and unexpected it could also backfire in ways it could it could bring unexpected really great luck or or opportunity and it can be bring very unexpected oh shit like what the f so we're gonna see where jupiter is really impacting your natal suns and what relationship there are to kind of get a gist of maybe what you can expect though it's never good to expect the unexpected this is supposed to be sort of those hopefully happy surprises um let's go into the decans <clears throat> so if you know that your natal sun is between zero and nine degrees Sagittarius, you guys are Sagittarius one. This correlates to basically November Sagittarians. Your birthdays would be between say the 22nd of November all the way through maybe the 1st of December. Your natal suns are sextile to the current sun and they will be trying to this full moon. This will be a very satisfying, happy, healthy, potent energy where you will feel the virility and the energy, especially around the 28th, 29th, and 30th. I really love this energy for you and this optimism and kind of charisma might actually help to stimulate some opportunities for you. <clears throat> You're in a long-term square to Saturn, which is all year long. This could cause frustration with rules, laws, obligations. I'll tell you this week, I don't think, I think that you'll feel very potent and I don't think that'll be getting to you at all, um, though you might butt heads more than ever, but in ways that you're not even aware of frustrating people, especially in authority positions. Though I would say, uh, sorry, this, there's also a sextile to Pluto if you guys are at the cusps, only you guys. So the cusp would be 
November 21st, 22nd, 23rd birthdays, that would be you guys. That sextile to Pluto with a sextile to the sun right now, trying to the full moon, this is going to be really cocky, potent energy that will open doors for you this week. Kind of pushed forward or egged on by that understanding from Saturn. I don't want to be ruled. I don't want to be controlled. Um, and they don't even know what the, they're talking about. So there could be definitely opportunities open up, especially if you were in, you know, frustrating con contracts or um, frustrating obligations, the sense of realizing there's something else out there and I don't have to be stuck. So it can be very productive energy this week for you. Definitely um, high energy and sort of optimistic. Let's go on to Sagittarius 2s. If you know that your natal sun is between 10 and 19 degrees Sagittarius, you guys are Sagittarius 2s. This correlates to birthdays about um, between, say, the 2nd of October through the 11th, 12th of October, around there. Your natal suns are square to Mercury through the 29th. And for those of you born um, more toward the I don't want to say something more toward the end of the second decade. It'll pretty much be all week long as Mercury moves into the third decade after that. Okay. Square to Mercury means it's just frustrating energy. <laughs> like the, this is not the great, do not sign important paperwork right now. Do not try to get into important conversations, meetings, tests, anything like that. This is not the best week. It'll be frustrating energy. It's it's more it's it's energy that's better left to learn things, especially from the frustration that comes up. Your natal suns are in a long term trine to Chiron, which is healing energy, healing that sense of self, putting yourself back together again because of challenges that you've been through, especially physical healing. We've talked about this before because Chiron is in Aries, which is very physical energy. Also a sense of wanting to help others as well. And then this quincunx to Jupiter. This is what I want you to be aware of too. You've got a square to Mercury. You've got a quincunx to Jupiter, which is unaspected, which will make everything more extreme, probably in the places where you really most don't want it. So this is, I don't want to say step on eggshells this week, but this is a week that there could be a lot of high intensity frustration, um, surprises that even if they are end up being good surprises, might feel like they're coming at the wrong time. Though this, this is just going to be more of a surprising, unpredictable week for you. So that's why important, you know, planning important things, important interviews and stuff, not really the best time to do it I would definitely wait till next week especially till after that square to mercury is cleared this quincunx to Jupiter will last a bit longer though it's unaspectedness will not and then it'll be a little bit easier to predict easier to predict how it's going to impact you but ultimately there's just this sense of everything seems bigger and more extreme this week and more frustrating FYI <sighs> <clears throat> It's a good, I think it's a good day actually for self-care and compassion this week for you guys. Just a sense of not to say that you've got to curl up in a ball, but to laugh. A sense of humor is really important in this energy. It will help you tremendously. Um, all right, let's go on to Sagittarius 3s. If you know that your natal sun is between uh, 20 and 29 degrees Sagittarius, you guys are Sagittarius 3s. This correlates to Sagittarius birthdays between the 12th and the 22nd of December. So your natal suns have been in a, okay, there's a lot of long terms here. Long term Neptune, uh, I'm sorry, a long term square to Neptune, which can be very creative creative energy it's stimulating your creativity but it can also be distracted the fact that this week it's also neptune is also in opposition to mercury makes the distraction factor even more potent so if you're finding yourself daydreaming or let maybe let yourself sleep more this is kind of important for this week 
because it'll bring more distraction and less clarity to your thoughts. Just an FYI, this long-term sextile to Saturn, you've been working with that all year long. This is just opening up opportunities for especially career or what you wanna to contribute to the world. So this is really good energy long-term. This trying to the North Node, I wanna move forward, I wanna make progress, you will be. Um, this quincunx to Uranus, I wanna be more independent, I don't wanna be ruled or bossed around or pushed. This could make you very, very potent and effective in leadership as long as you're not you're inspired by your independence instead of um, distracted by it I would say once again long-term energy this week right as of the 29th and for those of you born around the 12th or 13th of December it's even earlier in the week you will be square to mercury this is frustrating energy this is the don't push any important paperwork or contracts this week, especially toward the end of the week where it will be more potent. Just an FYI, the sextile to Mars means that you guys will be more virile. You will feel good in your body. It's almost like the times when things are, the brain is gonna be most unclear and awkward, your body is gonna be most supercharged. This could be the week where you make poor choices mentally and intellectually and become more impulsive physically with the sextile to mars i don't think anything bad will happen to you though you could be setting yourself up for some embarrassment on the other side of things um, in the coming weeks there's also a trine to venus your sensuality sexuality and sex life should be exceptionally wonderful this week and maybe it's because your mind is distracted that you end up allowing yourself to experience these things and maybe you should you know what like listen if this is a girl's gone wild week for you let it be at the very least you'll take away happy memories of your impulsivity at the very most you might actually open yourself up to something that you never would have um even valued or even considered no i'm not talking about drugs and alcohol i'm talking about experiences i'm talking about interactions with other people this is a stimulating energy for romance romantic partnerships and romantic potential so i can't ignore that this could be a great great week for it um though with all the other stuff going on i would say that it may be um No, I'm not going to say anything. We'll just see how it turns out. I, that kind of energy can make things very, very fun. Mercury, however, square, this will be, this will be, it's, it's at the very, listen, at the very least, it could be comical. It could just add potency to the stories. Do you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Um, awkwardness, definitely. Um, I don't think overall bad energy, more playful energy, to be honest with you. Yeah, more playful energy, to be honest with you. So you let me know in the comments below how this energy has impacted you, how you've experienced it, what you think about it. I would love to know if you know somebody who would like this video, suggest it to them, recommend it to them, send it off to them like tell them about it uh and then definitely remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel so that we grow here on astrology motivation i love you guys and please come on over to born without boundaries tarot for your week ahead tarot card message talk to you next week bye